Hi everyone, Editor Sam here. Bit of a special episode this week, because if you've been watching the show the whole time, you'll know that our very first ever episode of Everything You Didn't Need to Know About, which was the precursor to the Big Fact Hunt, was about Disneyland, my beloved Disneyland. But, you might not know this, but we actually did a couple of practice episodes where we tried everything out, we made sure that I could edit them all right, we made sure the sound was okay, and that very first ever episode was about Jurassic Park. So, we thought we'd give you a special look back at what this podcast was right at the beginning, over a year ago now, which is amazing to think about. We've covered so many different topics since then, but we still reference friend of the podcast, Nigel Neal, and this is the episode that comes from. So sit back, relax, enjoy, and we'll get back to your normal programming next week. Uh. The whole thing is the top, this is the top one's supposed to be like the Alps, and so it's like, but the Alps is like a perfect line. I didn't know that. Okay. That's cool. I knew that. Yeah, I knew that they, um, they're on the logo for it. There's a bear hidden in the, in the mountain on their logo. Yes, and once you've seen it, it's really hard not to see it. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised you guys don't know this because it's a major plot point in Jurassic Park. <laughs> the Toblerone shape. We spared no expense, and it's just, <laughs> just a whole room of Toblerone. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson, uh, famously little known actor, but famously little known actor in this movie, uh, killed by a velociraptor. He's been killed tw- uh, 30 times in his acting career and has killed over 1,700 people, giving him a kill to death ratio of 100 people he's killed for every 1.7 deaths that he's had. <laughs> What's your but, um, death to kill ratio, Tom? It's much, much lower than that. It's at least three. <laughs> Hopefully, it a... I mean, ho- it will go up over time. Uh, <laughs> but Samuel L. Jackson, reach. you believe that, right? Like, that's very similar to you to yeah. you, you don't see him acting and go, that is a very calm man. <laughs> He's... <laughs> He's the pacifist's pacifist. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like, yeah. I learned that um, the L stands for Leroy. <laughs> that's quite nice. That's great. I'm a big fan of Samuels. I'm a Samuel myself. And um, um, and speaking of people with L's in their name, uh, <laughs> just a, this is your annual reminder that LL Cool J stands for Ladies Love Cool James. <laughs> I feel like everyone needs to be reminded of that annually because it's the most amazing fact I know. <laughs> that he went, I'm going to be a rapper. And you know what, ladies love Cool James. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it was works. like he, he it was like he had to expand it. It was gonna be just ladies love James. Then he was like, not that James, cool James. Yeah. I feel like if you have to say you're cool James, you've already lost. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, I love Jurassic Park and I think it's really interesting that Samuel L. Jackson shares his credit screen with Wayne Knight. Um those are t- that's Newman from Seinfeld and Samuel L. Oh, that's Newman. Okay. Who see the share the credit screen, whereas B. D. Wong gets his own one. Also, I feel like there's very few films or TV shows where Samuel L. Jackson and Wayne Knight would be in the same credit role in any shape or form, let alone on the same screen. Was he in, was he in Seinfeld? Did Samuel L. Jackson do Seinfeld? I don't remember that episode. He was, he was in the, what, the contest episode. Uh, <laughs> I've had enough of these mother... Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> He'd make a good soup Nazi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sick of these mother neighbors coming into my house. <laughs> no mother soup for you. We have chosen Is it melon the wrong. Farming? <laughs> What's melon the farming. deal with mother soup? <laughs> 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 oh, imagine if Jerry Seinfeld was in Snakes on a Plane. <laughs> What's the deal with all these snakes on this plane? <laughs> They're after the airline food. <laughs> uh, what I what I love uh, when I was looking at this fact about um, Samuel L. Jackson because I went and looked through like his his um, like deaths. There's actually there's actually it's called Corpsopedia and it's um, it's a like a, a Wikipedia of deaths that actors have had. And I was like, only I thought thirty was actually quite low because he's been in hundreds of films. Um, but uh, yeah, no, he's only died. He's been killed by a velociraptor, a shark in the greatest death scene I think ever of all time, King Kong. Uh, and he's been shot by like Joe Pesci. Um, like, he's been shot by so many. He's been shot by himself. Like he's died in so many different ways. He's been impaled by a leg. Not yeah. to be that person, but how does the MCU figure into this? Because he got snapped and then unsnapped. So does that count as a death or not? Because he did die. 
He was erased but, from existence. Is that death? Well, Jesus died and then came back. So if we use the oh, Jesus again logic, with Jesus. Samuel L. Jackson being the modern day Jesus. <laughs> Jesus didn't kill many people, though. Jesus, he's killed heaps of people. All the wars that have been fought over Christianity, it's all down to that guy. Well, in fairness, before Jesus died, he would have had a really screwed up kill count because he raised someone from the dead. So his kill count would be negative. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe they put someone in the lead, you know, dividing by zero. Oh, maybe there. that's why he had to die. He was too powerful. He was, he he was calculator error. <laughs> <laughs> and the Lord said... Calculator error. Thou shalt not divide by zero. They could say boobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thou shalt not put a four and then a zero and then a zero and then a four together and then turn it upside down. And then it's get an eight, then a zero, then a zero. <laughs> That's eight. Oh, wow. What did I do? What did I do? I did. You said ho. I don't know who. <laughs> it's not ho ho. Like the book. Ho ho. Quite cool. uh, yeah. Like Santa Maybe. coming into a room and then getting awkward and going back out. He's like, ho ho. <laughs> <laughs> But that Samuel L. Jackson scene, he, they were actually supposed to film it, uh, but then like a hurricane came in like, and like wrecked the filming. But so they were going to film Samuel L. Jackson dying. And I actually think it's better off in that film that he didn't, like you just see his arm and then that's it. Yeah. Like, I was really hoping you were going to say Samuel L. Jackson killed the hurricane and then that <laughs> added to have. his count. He could have. Uh, that storm was like ended up in the film. Did you know that? they um they Everyone was on Hawaii filming. And then um, at the end, everyone was meant to be flying out, but the storm came in, so they couldn't. They had to stay there in a hotel. And then um, when they were, Spielberg got one of the cameras and was like, there's an actual storm outside. There's a storm in our film. Let's go film the storm. And they did. And the camera was like, no, I'm good. I'm just going <laughs> to watch like, Netflix. Yeah. Um, one thing fact? I found about, about the storm was it would make the T-Rex malfunction. And it used to make everyone absolutely shit themselves because they'd just be sitting there at lunch. And all of a sudden, the T-Rex would just go, <laughs> <laughs> just get struck by lightning that would make an amazing film actually if they did like it was a jurassic jurassic park like spin-off where they're filming jurassic park and all the like animatronic <laughs> robots get hit by lightning and come to so life jurassic park is x westworld yeah they the reason the t-rex malfunction like that is because they um uh, it's an audio it's an animatronic um it wasn't waterproof and Steven Spielberg decided really late in the game, hey, let's make it raining in this scene. And the guys who made the <laughs> animatronic were like, um, this is lined with foam. If it, if it absorbs water, it's going to be so heavy. And it didn't. that's why when it turns and does that scene, it's like shaking like that. That wasn't meant to happen. They don't know why it did that. <laughs> yeah, all That's the incredible. audience are sitting there going this is so cool and the animatronic guys are just like my baby <laughs> <laughs> i spent nine thousand hours making that we're from new zealand so this is a big thing for us because some of us are from new zealand so. oh yeah you're british aren't you as, as i was pointedly reminded the other day i'm an immigrant yeah <laughs> was that me did i say that yes <laughs> my sisters were born in england so i often tell them that they're not from here and they should go home yeah. But, so yes, I found out that um, beloved New Zealand actor Sam Neill is one not from New Zealand and two not called Sam. <laughs> his real name, name Neil Sam. His real name is Nigel Neil. No, it's not. It is Nigel, and he, he when he came, he was born in Northern Ireland as well. So he's like you, Jen. He's from the UK. <laughs> Um, he, uh, I think his dad was from New Zealand though, so they came back and lived here when he was like 11, 8 or 11, something like that. He came Some back timing. and then later went to your school, Kenny. Not at the Indeed. same time, I presume. No, considerably earlier. It's and he, um, was, he, he said that he, went, he chose Sam because it's a very manly name, correct? Um, and he got he, did, he just thought that the name Nigel wasn't very good at, to have on the playground, so he changed it. Well, to <laughs> particularly in a boarding house, uh, uh, rural rural boys and effeminate names uh, don't go well together. What was like, Nigel an effeminate name? Very what we say? It's, it's just it, dorky. I mean, also Sam. Does that mean that we can invite Sam Neil to join the Illiterati? Yes, we can. Jennifer Jewell, Sam Smith, Nigel Neil, Denise Dubay, Ben Blakely. Mm. All of our that, friends whose first and last names align. But, but gosh, that is lucky though that he came. He was born in Northern Ireland and came to New Zealand right before COVID hit. That, 
<laughs> this, was, this was lucky. He just did. <laughs> yes. Who could have predicted? And he, here he is. Like in you. Do you guys know how many uh, vineyards uh, his wine company, Two Paddocks, has? Two. Okay. Please hit me two. It's Isn't two. it only one? Three. Oh. <laughs> What's the point? It'll be two. Yeah. The wine doesn't, wine doesn't grow in paddocks, Sam. True. So, I don't drink. I wouldn't know. Uh, yeah. You could have two, you could have two paddocks. Sorry, Sam. Lots you don't vineyard. drink, therefore you know nothing about the production of alcohol. I don't know how numbers work because I don't don't drink. Sam has never eaten a grape in his life. <laughs> Raisins, right out. <laughs> <laughs> That's just raw wine. I know what you alcoholics are trying to do to me. Kenny, what's your favourite part of Jurassic Park? Oh, oh God. Uh, when the lawyer gets eaten on the toilet. Correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> there are no other answers. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, no, probably a serious answer because it absolutely blew my mind as a five-ish year old. The very first scene where they see the brachiosaur and they realise what's going on and Sam Neill reaches down and turns Laura Dern's head and makes her look at it. And yeah, and at that point I hadn't heard of computer graphics and my stupid little five-year-old brain was like, yeah, dinosaurs. Um, but Kitty, I want to know how you watched, how, when you were five, <laughs> I believe you were five in 1989, which was four years before the movie came out. How did you okay, get that? So this was, was a super advanced preview. So uh, I was nine or something. It, it was PG-13. I must have been sneaking in somehow. But prior to that, I had thought that uh, Fifle Goes West in American Tale 2 was the best movie ever. It's the and prequel. Was yep, yeah, Fifle Goes West is the prequel. The second <laughs> movie ever. Did you know what? that Jurassic Park was the highest grossing film of all time? What? Until it got overtaken by Titanic? Ooh. And did you know that Samuel L. Jackson is the highest grossing actor of all time? Apart Until from... he got overtaken by Titanic? Well, no, but when I, when I don't I think the ship this, got paid that much. When I googled <laughs> this, I was like, who is that? I was like, I gotta check. And it did highest grossing actor all time. And it gave me Dwayne The Rock Johnson because he's tall. <laughs> <laughs> was the, just the, the tallest grossing actor of all time. I was like, hi, no. Oh, not... <laughs> Andre the Giant? Yeah. Mm. Is taller or, than Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Or, or literally any actor, you know, the highest actor above sea level. Whoever and played space... um, Edmund Hillary in the biopic. You know they didn't go up to the top of the mountain though, right? <laughs> Shush! Isn't it weird that we don't call Everest by its Chinese, name? Chinese Nepalese name? Does anyone know what that is? No. no. Is it like Shangri-La or something like that? No, Shangri-La Shangri is like... No. Shangri-La is a mystical place. <laughs> oh, man, if only we had some sort of way to look up facts. If you feel look. everyone just, like, regretting their decision not to just Google everything immediately. <laughs> Sam, can you please just look it up on your phone? We all want to know. <laughs> Here we go. The Tibetan name is Chomolungma, which means Mother Goddess of the World. I get knocked down when I get up again. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to keep me down. Sign, what did people do before phones? Like, oh, I wish I knew that. I guess I'll never know. I'm going to find an encyclopedia and maybe find out. Yeah. Well, find out be, what the answer was 12 years ago when we yeah. bought this encyclopedia. I'll, I'm going, to, go. I'm going to keep a diary where I'll write down all the questions I have and then I'll <laughs> answer them all when I get the internet. Mm -hmm. all right, so who, what's everyone's favourite dinosaur from, from Jurassic Park? So you can't do like, oh, I like, yeah. No, the one that they invented, the Eushauraptor. Spielberg wanted the Velociraptors to be bigger and scarier, and so he just like made them bigger. And then after Jurassic Park came out, a bunch of paleontologists were like, oh, turns out this is real. <laughs> they found <laughs> these new dinosaurs that were bigger Velociraptors, and they're called Eushauraptors. Where were they from? I think Switzerland. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Utah, probably. You could tell because they had holes in them. <laughs> and they were neutral. They were completely Lots neutral. of Nazi gold stored and they under had them. Nougat. <laughs> yeah, trained in a Nougat center. <laughs> yeah, and they only ever came towards you in like threes, so that if you only ever saw one at a time, like a toporin. <laughs> you know, the, the whole thing is the topor isn't the toporin supposed to be like the Alps? And so it's like, but the Alps is like a perfect line. Oh, there. Okay. That's cool. I didn't yeah. that. Yeah, I knew that amazing. they um they're on the logo for it. There's a bear hidden in the in the mountain on their logo. Yes, and once you've seen it, it's really hard not to see it. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised you guys don't know this because it's a major plot point in Jurassic Park. <laughs> the Toblerone shape. We spared no expense, and it's just <laughs> just a whole room of Toblerone. <laughs> <laughs> 
they're clearly the worst chocolate. They're the only chocolate that actively hurts you as you eat it. Oh yeah, <laughs> so, no, that's good. Look, I think it's quite funny. Like Jurassic Park is. Um, I grew I grew up in England. I was born in New Zealand, but I grew up in England. But when I was there, Sam Neill was like the only New Zealander I'd ever heard of. Um, and his name was Sam when he was from the country, which we found out isn't true at all. But then um, the keeper guy is called Robert Muldoon, who was the prime yes! minister of New Zealand as well. <laughs> We got a we're we're got drunk got, and caught yeah. a snap election. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> the schnapps we're, election. We're going to hunt the velociraptors. It well, we, doesn't give you much time to prepare. Doesn't give the velociraptors. Actually, in the so I don't know if any of you have read the books. So there was a book. Uh, Jurassic Park is based on a book by Michael Crichton, and it's great. Um, it's quite different, but um, in it, um, Sam Neill is like a way better character. Sam Neill, specifically, they go, uh, they go Grant, uh, well, I forgot his last name. Um, Ellen Grant. Dr. Ellen, Ellen Grant. Yeah, they're like, Ellen Grant, played by Sam Neill. Uh, and then, but that's, what's really weird is that that's how they do his name every single time. So it's like, said, oh. said Grant, played by Sam Neill. Uh, but no, said Grant, great... very Sam neill <laughs> <laughs> Said Sam Neill as Grant. Uh, but it's actually a great book. Um, it has like a whole bunch of extra things in it. Um, and one of the things that it has is, um, you know how um, uh, Ian Malcolm, um, the actor is now I'm spacing on. Um, Jeff Goldblum. Uh, Jeff Joel Goldblum. Um, he's a mathematician. And in it, um, one of the like major themes of, of it is chaos theory, of this idea of like little mistakes building up to make like big mistakes. And uh, throughout the book, they've got these like little drawings of chaos theory, um, of like little patterns picking up. It's really neat. Um, so yeah, cool. it, in the book he dies. What? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the book, like a bunch of people, a bunch of people who don't die do die, and a bunch of people who do die don't die. It's yeah, in the, in the movie, it's really. Interesting. Is that because they, M Michael Crichton wasn't setting the book up for a sequel? Well, they, he did write a sequel. Yeah, yeah. Oh. which I've also read, and it's also great. Um, but in it, he actually kind of retcons um, Ian Malcolm dying, Jeff Goldblum's character dying, and he's like, "Oh, we, it was a cover up." They said he died, but he actually didn't. Yeah, it was a cover-up. He colluded with the T-Rex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Turns out he, he hid inside the body of one of the Velociraptors. <laughs> kind of sneaking no one can ever kill a mathematician. Have you guys seen Jurassic World? Yes. The Chris Pratt one, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, overwhelming memory. That really nasty scene where the English. Uh, or Pierre gets picked up by a pteranodon and dropped into the... <laughs> just, yeah. It just didn't seem necessary. It's, it, they're just abusive for nope. planning a wedding. <laughs> I'm my my last memory of it was the, the terrible bit where... Um, oh, what's her name? The girl. Judy oh. Greer. Is it Bryce Dallas Howard? No, the, the daughter of... Bryce uh, Dallas Howard. Uh, yes. Yeah, that one. <laughs> um, when she falls and she falls like, oh, oh no, I have fallen. And it's just the most ridiculous shot. It looks like she has fallen and then contorted. Her. It's it's just so stupid, and you you can just see it's one of those ones that are like, oh, this will be a great promotional shot, and then they had to sort of somehow shoehorn it into the action sequence. It's very. It, it's it it's the page nice. three um, position where you have to show your boobs and your bum at the same time. And moment. your butt at the same time. It's very it's very hard on your back. Actually. It's extremely hard on the back. I've got yeah. serious muscles. Um, and it also it. shows you really clearly that she's still wearing her high heels. And every part of me is just screaming, you absolute idiot, you deserve to get eaten by a dinosaur. This is absurd. Take off your damn high heels. You should be okay. taking them off and using them as a weapon, right? And putting your keys between yeah. your fingers. Yeah. And that way, when the dinosaurs jump. <laughs> it, it's just such a weird kind of like um, contrast as well, because in, in Jurassic Park, Laura Dern um, is yeah. like total badass. Um, and like, yeah. you know, there's like, you know, like her running through, like running away from Bryce <sighs> through and like, you know, like swinging around and like, yeah, it's like total yeah. badass. And then Bryce Dallas Howard like running away from a T-Rex in heels. So it's, it's so weird. I absolutely love Jurassic World. I thought it was great. It reminded me of Jurassic Park a lot. <laughs> and I think you're it's all wrong. Sense. I think it's a great movie. That um, part of it really annoyed me. I also it was... think it might be the most recent movie I've seen. <laughs> oh no, I went to see Peter Rabbit. Oh, having oh, kids has changed you. Think about that. <laughs> Mr. McGregor is played by Sam Neill. I, did, did, has anyone, has anyone ever thought about the fact that the two main characters are called Alan and Ally? Those are very mm, similar I names. Think. You'd think Michael Crichton would have 
call them different but they things. call each other dr grant and ellie because she's a woman so it's fine <laughs> Um, well, you're settler. <laughs> yeah. She yeah. takes the title of her husband if he's in the room, and um, she doesn't have one. So, in the book, she's his. She's his student, and they have no romantic connection at all. Oh. Yeah, and it's actually better for it. <laughs> we get it, better. Tom. You've read a book. I've books. read several books. Thank you. I read Congo, which we should talk about at some point. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's a country. Been... It's, uh, also... it's a brutal book, which has eyeballs being flicked across by pedal-wielding giant apes. It's pretty cool. <laughs> which also killed Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> um, I'd like to tell you about where the dinosaurs come from. And it's not a chicken and egg thing, and it's not a mummy dinosaur. Winnie, mummy dinosaur, and a daddy dinosaur love each other very much. Not always. Um, so sometimes it's friends with benefits. They don't have to love each other. Yeah. Alan Grant <laughs> and Ellie Sattler. Sattler, uh, famously uh, scientist, and when a scientist wants to describe a new species, they write a very long and boring monograph where they tell you everything there is to know about the animal, plant, mollusk, whatever that they're describing, and they say very boring facts about how big it is, what it looks like, what colours, blah, 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 and they say, and if you want to see this animal, you have to go over here and see the animal over here. Now, back in the 1800s, there were these two dinosaur discoveries um, called uh, Coal and Marsh, and they battled against one, one another, and they named lots and lots and lots of dinosaurs. But Coal, Edmund Drink of Coal, wanted to be the type specimen for the human race. So he said, uh, I would like uh, you to package up my body when I'm, died, when I'm dead, not before, after, um, get my skeleton, put it somewhere, describe it, and I will be the human type specimen, and everyone can come and look at me. And then they went and did that, and they discovered that he had not just a little bit of syphilis, but he had all the syphilis <laughs> and none of the pelvic bones that you'd expect to find in a human. Um, and they thought, this isn't a good idea. So now he's <laughs> in the cardboard box, and there are so there's still no actual type specimen for the human race, but everyone sort of points at, um, oh, now I've gone and forgotten his name. A Swedish guy who discovered, Linnaeus, um, who named lots of other, th other things. So, so yeah. Can't, his body is still in a cardboard box. I mean, um, I think they, <laughs> it's going to leak by now. I, it's just the bones. Like, they don't run very far. But it's cardboard um, still. <laughs> It feels, considering that Jeremy Bentham is stuffed and mounted in the entrance to his old hall, it, it just feels a lack of respect. But, so speaking of, um, of boxes with skeletons in them, um, so <laughs> I went to a school to do a program, to, to, to do science prog a science program, and a teacher came up to me and he goes, yeah, so I'm just, you might be able to help me. Um, I've got this skeleton in my office, and I'm just wondering what to do with it. And I thought, like, oh, yeah, it looks like a, you know, like a model skeleton. And I'm like, oh, yeah, uh, you know, where'd you get it from? He's like, well, my parents gave it to me. And it's a small Indian man. <laughs> and I don't know, it's just this human bones in, in my office. And I went, right, well, um, <laughs> maybe get to Papa on the line. Maybe you talk to a museum. But he's just got this, he just had this box of a dead guy <laughs> in his office. Oh. That's so he weird. He, he, he could have written up a long and boring monograph and said, this is the type of <laughs> of the human race. <laughs> um, to answer your question from earlier, my favourite dinosaur is the Triceratops. Thank you. It, it, which is Good the correct answer. It's the best dinosaur. Who was, who was yours, Tom? I quite, I mean, I quite liked the Dilophosaurs, the, um, the, the, um, the, the, the frillings. Mm. I mean, granted, like, there's no... You know that there. both the and the... Is a load of shit, right? Yeah, that's all my No, time. I assumed I assumed the whole movie was based entirely on fact. Uh, <laughs> there's, no, there's not really any way. I mean, yeah, there's not really any way they could have known it. But I think I mean, there's no there's no reason why they would. I mean, be, you know, if you find the bones and you find a big frill, that's a bit of a clue normally. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't, we find don't know the that they didn't spit poison. Is all we're saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can't prove that. And it's weird. You, do, you don't know that they didn't have shoulder length hair and play classical guitar either but exactly <laughs> um, um, somewhat, well, somewhat related about... to that i found out that um samuel l jackson played the piccolo that's that cute be, he played that french horn piccolo funny. piccolo trumpet and flute those were his four instruments <laughs> you know snakes huh. on a plane guy piccolo he's quite a large guy so a piccolo would look even 
even tinier in his in his hands. Adorable. You know, what I'm really struggling with with the Samuel L. Jackson thing is I can't think of a single quote that he does that doesn't end in mother. <laughs> <laughs> Play, what? Play the piccolo again, mother. Hmm. What about <laughs> hold on to your butts? Best quote of all time. I love. I still do that. Uh, I still still use that quote from time to time because it's just such a good totally random <laughs> are the other quotes from this from jurassic park that you guys use all the time um clever girl yeah oh yeah 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 what are some other quotes well there's it's not really a quote but the objects in mirror are closer than they appear when the <laughs> <laughs> oh must go faster must go faster the mm-hmm. only thing i've ever seen that uses that to better effect is that out of hell musical yeah meatloaf <laughs> yeah <laughs> Entertaining. The title of the song, Objects in the Rearview Mirror May Appear Closer Than They Are. That's a long title. It, it's Meatloaf. He does that. It's Jim Steinman. He yeah, does not care Ooh. about yeah, The guy who wrote all the songs and, and made Meatloaf him and made Bonnie Tyler her. And the curtain and back, Kenny. You took the words right out of my mouth. Oh, right. uh, uh. That was very clever. Clever girl. Life. Yeah, life uh, finds a way. <laughs> no, never. Never that song. Never, ever, ever. Uh, Jurassic Park launched the career of George Clooney. What? You may not remember George Clooney being in Jurassic Park, and that's because he's not in Jurassic Park. <laughs> but as Tom pointed out before, Michael Crichton wrote Jurassic Park, and Steven Spielberg found out about the book because he was working with Crichton on the screenplay that Crichton had written for ER, which was going to be a movie. And then Michael Crichton was like, I'm also writing this book about dinosaurs. And Spielberg was like, drops ER, immediately picks up Jurassic Park and just runs away with it. And so the ER movie got kind of benched. And then they came back to it a while later and were like, maybe you should turn this into a TV series? Because Spielberg was still keen on it. And so he helped ER. And that's where ET came, came from. They called ER and turned it into ET. In- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, he's like, what was that thing? Is E R E T E S? Yeah, he would have yeah. literally gone from E T to E R. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. And but, well, I mean, if he was juggling Schindler's List and Jurassic Park at the same time, I yeah. feel like E R to E T is not such a big leap. Yeah, Schindler's List during the day, and then chilling out overnight by looking at some computer dinosaurs. It sounds great. <laughs> Somewhere out there, there's an E S script that he just didn't get around to. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? What would it's, just, it's just about really small people, the extra smalls. <laughs> it was a borrowers remake, another borrowers remake. <laughs> Fun George Clooney fact. Did you know that he only ate, he only did those coffee commercials so that he could save people in Sudan? From dinosaurs. Yeah. What a selfish man. He blew all the money on satellites and to track people moving around. And what did you blow all your tribe money on? uni. Yeah, what a waste of time, eh? I know, right? Satellites to track pressure. <laughs> you don't need a satellite to track pressure. You, you just stand outside and go, $2 shot! <laughs> okay. So, guys, we're, we're coming on our time. Quick question. What do you think the moral of Jurassic Park is? Mine is pay more programmers uh, or pay your programmers <laughs> better. Yeah, don't get don't get Seinfeld Postman to be your your um, <laughs> programmer. <laughs> Wayne Knight is not to be trusted. Do better hey? psychometric testing. Don't hire jerks. Any problem that you cause with too many dinosaurs can be solved by adding more dinosaurs. <laughs> yes. One bigger dinosaur. <laughs>